Good morning everyone, I'm Shane Charcha here with another health supplement tip for the day. So today I'm talking warning signs that you may be low in vitamin D. Um, everybody seems to be looking to take vitamin D. Doctors are telling people to take vitamin D. And it kind of makes me wonder why everybody wants vitamin D when we're like deficient in so many different things but everybody's focused on vitamin D. And I do know a deficiency in any vitamin or mineral is really important, but there's something the medical community sees that um, of, of big importance, like magnesium. I've done videos on this where everybody seems to be deficient in magnesium, and there's a lot of symptoms involved when you're deficient in magnesium. But nobody really touches on that. But vitamin D seems to be fairly important. So what's vitamin D good for? Well, it's going to help you uh, absorb calcium. If you don't have vitamin D, your calcium absorption is extremely poor. Um, you're more at risk for high blood pressure, more at risk for type 2 diabetes. And I've even seen some research on um, vitamin D can help to prevent uh, colon cancer. So it is super important, but again, I'm just wondering why they're so focused on vitamin D as opposed to deficiency in a lot of other vitamins or minerals, that type of thing. So I'm going to let you know three warning signs uh, that you may suffer from that if you really have these, you may want to start taking vitamin D. I know I'm in Alberta and I've heard that in Ontario they've just stopped testing for vitamin D. Um, they just tell you to take vitamin D because apparently we are all deficient in it. So, but if you have any of these symptoms, go out get some vitamin D. So, um, if your mood is very low, I mean, that's a big, big, big thing. A lot of people's mood is very low. I've talked to so many people that have gone on vitamin D and their mood starts to go up and they swear by vitamin D. So if your mood is low, look into vitamin D. Another thing is um, excess forehead sweating. And I'm not talking about working out sweating. I'm just talking about you're really not doing much and your forehead is sweating. I guess that's a huge sign when it comes to little babies that are deficient in vitamin D. Their foreheads sweat a lot. So if you're an adult, um, and your forehead is just sweating constantly and you don't know why, you may want to start supplementing with vitamin D. Um, another thing is uh, aching bones, and I'm not necessarily talking about your aching joints. Um, I have a lot of people that I talk to and they say my bones are aching, but when I talk to them a little bit more and ask them, it turns out to just be their joints but their bones would be kind of an all over ache I would imagine. I've never experienced bone pain, but if your bones are, are very brittle um, and you have that bone ache, you may want to start taking vitamin D. Now what would put you at risk for low vitamin D? One is never going outdoors. If you're indoors a lot like myself, I work around um, in a business, there's no windows, I spend a lot of time in there and I try to be outside a lot uh, when I'm walking. But, you know, if I, if I know, and especially with winter coming, I'm definitely going to start taking more vitamin D. Um, so yeah, if you're indoors, if you have gut issues, anything like Crohn's, IBS, um, anything like that, you're probably poorly absorbing fat and vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So. If, um, you know, if everything's basically going right through you, you're not absorbing very well, so you may want to start supplementing vitamin D. Another thing, too, is if you are over the age of 50, your body's just not functioning like it once was, and you're probably, your kidneys are probably not going to convert, um, you know, sunlight and that type of thing into vitamin D as it once did before. So if you're over 50, look into vitamin D. Okay, so let's get into vitamin D supplements. This may blow your mind. I take, uh, not this, but yeah, I take Natural Factors Vitamin D3. Okay, so number one, you go to the health food store and you're looking on the shelf and you, you're looking for vitamin D. No, I just want vitamin D or I just want vitamin D3. It's all the same stuff. Meaning that um, I know here in Canada, 
you no longer have just vitamin D on the label, they have to put vitamin D3 because the form and supplement form, it comes in two forms. I'll link another video that I made uh, a while back in the comments below by the difference, but D3 is the kind the body absorbs very well. And there's vitamin D2. Vitamin D2 is uh, it's a vegetarian source or vegan source, I'm not too sure, but the body doesn't do a very good job at absorbing that. So yeah, vitamin D3. Here's the part that's going to possibly blow your mind. All vitamin D3 is exactly the same. It's, it's all the same stuff, but the deliveries are different. Okay, so let me show you kind of what I'm taking. Ooh, geez, I almost knocked that whole thing over. So these are just like little white tablets. Super easy to swallow. It's always recommended to take with a high fat meal because it is fat. Uh, fat absorbent or fat soluble so you would take this with a high fat meal okay so vitamin D but then there's other ones there's vitamin D3 that's in a soft gel so vitamin D3 in a soft gel is that little outer coating and it's liquid on the inside kind of like a vitamin E well it is in a base of fat so you don't really have to worry about taking it with such a high fat meal I have high fat meals so I have no problems taking like the tablet form my digestion is good, um, so a little tablet is fine. But a lot of people do prefer the soft gels. So soft gels are very good. You don't have to take it with as much fat. Um, but there's no main difference in the D. It's just a delivery system. So it's like it's got extra fat in the soft gel. In a tablet, it doesn't have it. Or you can get the liquids. So the liquid is going to be the same thing as the soft gel without the coating but they're not as, I don't know, convenient to take. But the way you generally do it is each drop tends to be about a thousand international units. You would put that maybe on the back of your hand, one or two drops, or in juice or anything like that. And um, yeah, basically take it and it's that easy. Speaking of liquid, I gotta take a drink of coffee because it's early in the morning. Okay, so vitamin D, that's the supplement forms. Um, how much vitamin D should you take? So if you don't have any symptoms, you're under the age of 30 or under the age of 40 even, you think you're fairly healthy, I would say take one to 2,000 international units. I take one to 2,000, I think I'm doing okay. I'm not sure, I've never been tested, but um, I don't go for those super, super high doses yet. I've never been told to. I mean, you read things all over the internet, but one or two little tablets should be fine. Now, if you are deficient in it, or you tend to be deficient, or you, you have any of those risk issues, you're over 50, or you have those gut issues, maybe focus at two to 4,000. Anything higher than 4,000, go check with a healthcare practitioner, either a naturopath or a doctor, and get their advice on how much you should take to treat, to boost it. Because I've heard of some ridiculously high doses that I would never even touch. But um, apparently they really, really help if you are highly deficient in vitamin D. So yeah, that's my little vitamin D lesson for the day. And check the comments below. I'll add the link to the other video. If you have any questions, email me at shanespiltalk at yahoo.com or leave me a comment below. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. Share it with your friends and help them kind of understand vitamin D. I'm Shane Chacha saying stay healthy, stay motivated. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.